Dr. Phil. Beware of the card narc. When I do see that some lazy bones has left their card out, I turn on the wand of justice and activate the mouse siren. You do more than just ask them to put their car back. Is your disability lazy bones itis? You shame them. I don't know who you think you are. You say you're a trained agent. Who trains you? Me. You put the shopping cart behind my truck. You're preventing me from leaving. Why didn't you just take your card back? Parking lot monitors specifically pick up shopping carts. That's their job. They get paid to do just that. If I just go out there and say, why don't you take me back? They don't see the consequences. You just don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because the evidence contradicts what you're saying. Let's do it. Good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready to take care of you. the feeling that you're being watched <laughs> I, I do <laughs> with over 320 million working camera phones in this country the chances of you being recorded in public have never been higher so if you are out and about you better be looking over your shoulder why because you could end up like one of my guests today an encounter with a mysterious man in a parking lot soon escalated into an argument that was filmed and posted on the internet with thousands of views. So what was the disagreement about? <laughs> well, you'll be surprised. We're talking about, yeah, a shopping cart. This is not an isolated incident. This mysterious man that calls himself Agent Sebastian travels the country as leader of the cart narcs and says he has narked hundreds of members of the public who do not return their shopping cart to the cart receptacle. I'm serious. Sebastian has a growing number of fans and critics, some of whom are here today. Now he says as long as there are lazy bones in the parking lots, he has a mission and his work is just not done. Don't hit me, ma'am. I'm not gonna hit you. I'm gonna take your glasses and I'm gonna throw them on the ground. I'm Agent Sebastian. I'm the founder of the Cardnarks. Cardnarks are an independent organization that tries to get people to just take their cart back to the cart return. That's not where the cars go, it's the mulch. When I do see that some lazy bones has left their cart out, I turn on the wand of justice and activate the mouth siren. That's not where the cars go, it's the middle of the spot. We've had hundreds of encounters. I've had many threats on my life being a card narc. Besides a guy pulling a gun on me, I've had multiple people say they're gonna run me over. Well, sir, that's not nice. Sir, that's against the law. There's definitely an adrenaline rush. Go f yourself, ma'am. Cart narc. How about that? This is my uniform. It's, I have an equipment vest, which is actually a bulletproof vest. I put my body camera right here captures everything that happens so nobody can lie about it afterwards. That's uh, curbing, sir. Why? Yeah, you know that's against the law to videotape somebody. I have this wand here which lights up. It shows that I'm highly visible. I Already threw hit. drink on you, that's little assault. girl, okay? Uh, uh, and that's, a little girl. And as a feminist, I take offense with that. After I ask them nicely to return their cart, if they still don't do it, I slap on a bumper magnet for shame. Where does it say that I have to do anything? That's the thing. Is, it's politeness. That's great. Keep picking them up. Think about somebody besides yourself. Our videos get millions and millions of views. This is because I think it's a common pet peeve. Is your disability lazy bones itis? And who the f are you? Oh. Well, lazy bones itis? How about f itis? People say you're bullying and harassing people. That's simply not true. What I'm doing is I'm not letting them throw a temper tantrum and dissuading me from my mission. I'm a highly trained special agent with the cart narcs. So what we do is we narc people out who leave their carts out like this, like big old lazy bones. To those who say I'm just shaming the public, yes, I am. We are a social creature, and that's how we learn what to do, is by watching examples of how to behave. There is an epidemic of lazy bones in America, and the cart narcs are here to slide it back. Wait a minute, ma'am, please stop approaching me. I'm backing away. I... No, come here, because I'm going to teach you. Uh-oh, pepper, pepper spray. spray. I'm going to teach you. Ah. She's trying to assault me with pepper spray. You have pretty quick feet. 
Well, yeah, I, I have to flee quite often. As you saw, pepper spray. I've had gun, a gun pulled on me. I've yeah. had people try to hit me with their cars and trucks over just asking them to put their cart back where they know it belongs. Uh huh. Well, but you do more than just ask them to put their cart back. Well, that's correct because they You shame them. Correct. And this is, it's only, as you saw in the videos there, it's a bumper magnet. It's not marking, but it is that scarlet letter that says, I don't return my shopping cart like a jerk. And when they do react like what we're seeing in some of these videos, it does highlight how ridiculous they are, how ridiculous their yeah. ego is. Well, here's an excerpt from uh, a video posted by Sebastian on his YouTube page in February of last year. And I want you to pay close attention to what Sebastian says to the woman in this video. Is your disability lazy, lazy bones-itis? Because I saw you walk around the store and then Oh, absolutely. Up. How about that? You Go yourself. Delicious McDonald's and Go delicious yourself. I love bang energy drinks. I don't care. Drink, you're throwing it at I me. I don't give a Man, let me get you my, let me get you my business card. I don't know who you think you are. I'm the card narc. I told you. But don't ever tell somebody with a disability it's lazy bones-itis. You got pretty you have a pretty good partner. throwing arm for someone with a disability. Throwing arm, it's my back. I'm going to use your back to throw. Would you like my business card or not? How about that? So how Why do you harass people? Not harass. Agent I'm Sebastian. saving the next person with a real disability who might with have... With a real disability? Who might have like... Don't know, ever insult somebody and tell them they don't have a real disability, Sebastian. Yeah, might, I'm in a hurry to go to home to my autistic daughter, who also has a disability. Yeah, I'm sure you have an autistic daughter. I'm not trying to say And I don't think she wants her mother to be like this. If I had to... You probably could be a better well, role model for her, you, you, quite frankly. No, Sebastian. Sam. You're, you're a piece of... Ma'am, I didn't throw anything at somebody. Sebastian, you're not inside my body, so don't ever insult nobody. I doubt many Sorry, people are getting that. your body anytime soon. What was the last thing you said? Uh, she said, uh, you're not inside my body, and I said, I doubt anybody would really want to get your body anytime soon. I made a crack, a joke, sure, but it's, again, it's to show how ridiculous they're being over not taking her car back. And by the way, after all that, after throwing stuff at me, after threatening to hit me uh, with her truck, she took her cart back. So the whole thing about, oh, I'm, I'm too uh, hurt or whatever, disabled to take my cart back was clearly a lie. And that's why I kept pressing, because I knew it was a lie. Well, no, you don't know. You don't know what people's day is. <sighs> you don't know what their life is. I don't know her day, Dr. Phil. But I do know that I saw her walk out to her truck, climb up in her truck and load her groceries. And then the second she didn't need her shopping cart, it's in the handicap access way, blocking the place that handicapped people need to go. Did you say you're... a trained agent sure that's that adds who, who trained you me <laughs> <laughs> hundreds of hours and that adds to the whole silliness of it because these people flip and out what, over stuff. what kind of agent are you an agent of the carts of the cart narcs and you said somebody curbed their cart you said this is a violation of what a public decency how many times have you pulled into a parking well, spot well you said it's a violation as though it's a violation of some code no there's no criminal charge there's no there's no ticket i'm writing anybody it's just a violation of common courtesy uh, the same as littering or not picking up after your dog so or... what you meant is this is rude correct yes sir but you were just acting like a cop no sir i, or I an want agent an agent yeah i never identify myself as law enforcement because obviously that would be illegal well, here's a statement from Desiree, the woman we just saw. This man and his co-workers, are there more of you? You don't have any co-workers. No, no, but that's the impression people there, get. There aren't any other agents? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, so, she says, this man and his co-workers, of which there are none, uh, need to stop harassing people. You never know what someone else is going through. Like many others in this world, my daughter has autism. She also has epilepsy. She's an amazing little girl, and I'm blessed to be her mother. Please stop these hateful ways. Thank you, and God bless, Desiree. With all due respect to her daughter, what does that have to do with taking your cart back? Well, here's what it might have to do with it. It might have to do with the fact that she might have really been at the absolute edge of her coping energies. She may have been really in a hurry to get home. I don't know that. I, I didn't meet her. I don't know. I'm just saying that I, I just read her words. Sure. I, I hear what you're saying. If she was in such a hurry to get home, why'd she spend six, seven minutes chasing me around that parking lot, throwing stuff at me? Again, it wasn't in the clip, but she threatened to run me over with her truck. We hear all these excuses. I've heard everything Who's from... we? Uh, I should say me. Major okay. <laughs> Uh, I heard uh, I, my boyfriend just broke up with me. What does any of that have to do with picking up after yourself? Well, I think it has to do with the fact that you antagonize and provoke people to the point that they kind of lose it. 
and I didn't start out with the intention of provoking people. This was just a, a why do people leave their carts out? You, you put these magnets on their cars, right? That's correct, sir. Yeah, and like, uh, you, you even put a flag on there. We do have those flags now, too, yeah. On their car. And again, it's, it's, it's obvious, as the audience can see, it's super silly. And for, for people to try to threaten my life over a bit of silliness instead of just saying, you know what, I was lazy, you're right. People will lie to your face about medical issues or whatever, but I see them with my own two eyes, and we just saw her take her card back. They'll lie to your face by telling somebody that they're a trained, authorized agent. That's not a lie. Tomorrow, mom is a life coach, but can't control her own daughter. That is enough! No, it is enough! No, it is enough with you! Willow has pulled a knife on me, kicked a hole in the wall. I have called the cop over 27 times in the past year. I am afraid that she could potentially kill me. Is this coming from pain or is this coming from just a dark evil? I don't know how to cope with it. You're in over your head, right? Oh, absolutely. That's tomorrow, then on Thursday. Since the start of the year, a staggering 34 million Americans quit their jobs. I quit. I quit. The Great Resignation. That video will haunt you in your career. That's Thursday. People are getting more selfish. They're trapped in their own little fog, their own little bubble, where only they matter. And now we have these mobility scooters everywhere, which are great, but from what I've seen, most people don't actually need them. They're just bad. Agent Sebastian runs a YouTube page called Cartnarks. Uh, and there are hundreds of videos on there. Some of them are explosive videos of him chastising shoppers in parking lots who don't return their shopping carts. You, you say you're not doing this to antagonize. Which videos get the most views? Well, they are the ones where people flip out the most. And because I think people yeah. agree with the, the pet peeve that we are highlighting here, and they also see these people acting like babies. These, these people are throwing adult temper tantrums. How, does the, how do the stores feel about you? Out doing this we get a lot of uh, positive messages from people who work at the stores you keep saying we <laughs> you're right yeah. you stop that <laughs> and you understand we've just been through a global pandemic right and people have been <laughs> in quarantine for uh, over a year and you you roll your eyes at this you're trained as an engineer right yes sir chemical and biomedical okay yeah and uh, you understand that right now we have the highest incidence of depression uh, anxiety and stress levels that we've that we've that we've ever seen right now. I, be so, I believe so. That. People are on edge, and probably the best way to deal with that and nurture those people is not to throw a camera in their face and antagonize them. See, this is the problem, and this is what we hear. We always hear a thousand different reasons other than I just didn't I just didn't want to pick up after myself. I you, well, to, if you could do that. You could do it that way, but then you wouldn't get the clickbait that you have on your channel if they weren't chasing you down with pepper spray. Right, and again, we didn't, I, I didn't start out doing this ex knowing what these reactions would be. This People bring that up too, like, oh, you're just doing it for the views or whatever. Started with zero views and zero subscribers, but it's the, again, the, the message is something that people resonate with. Uh, th none of that has anything to do with putting a cart away. That just has to do with publicly shaming someone <laughs> that's less advantaged than perhaps yourself. There was one woman that said she had one knee, and you said, I don't believe that because I saw you go in the store. Sure, I yeah. mean, can you look at someone and tell where they've had a, I can, a total I can look and see what, they've, what they did the five minutes before I talked to them. Well, here's that clip. You know, rich or poor, we don't keep score. All we want is there for to be lazy bones no more. And that's not doing it. Well, it's, yeah, it's rolling away, huh? Oh, the curbing right in front of the cart narcs, too. That's too bad. There's a cart return right over there if you want it. There's a cart return right over. No, no, that's your cart, not mine. Who are you? I'm Agent Sebastian with the cart narcs, like it says on my chest in a bold, powerful letters. Oh, what'd you buy? Okay, so then do you think you get to make it harder for the next person to park? Uh, here come the, here come the, okay, let's get, bring them on. I'm a nice guy. I'm helping out the community, actually. I have one knee. You want, I want your car. Uh, okay, I got one for you. But, yeah, so did you have one knee when you walked into the store, too, or did it, did you lose it on the way in?
Wow. So, Dr. Phil, we just saw her kick her car card up on the curb. We just saw her yell at me and then try to deflect with, I spent $300 like that has anything to do with anything. And then what happened magically when I called her out? She walked the cart back all the way. People will lie to your face about, and they'll try to throw up these things like medical issues or whatever. But I see them with my own two eyes, and we just saw her take her cart back. You know, they'll lie to your face, like tell somebody that they're a trained, authorized agent and, <laughs> and that they're in violation. That's not a lie. <laughs> What is it like coming face to face with Sebastian in a parking lot and having the whole ordeal shared on the internet for the world to see? Well, my next guest knows exactly what it feels like, and he ain't happy about it. We'll talk about that next. What's your car? Not my car. Where are you going? Sir, we have a maneuver called a pit maneuver. The cart's right here, sir. I'm standing with the cart. What he did was he put the shopping cart behind my truck, which prevented me from leaving. I felt that this guy was trying to entrap me. I want to confront Sebastian to let him know it's not good to antagonize people you don't even know. He's going to meet the wrong person, and this can get real ugly real quick. From navigating headlines. Fentanyl. My next guest says that uh, there's... This is all just a bunch of crap, and that Agent Sebastian's sole aim is to humiliate and rile up innocent people going about their daily business. Take a look. Whoop, 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 whoop. Card narcs, card narcs here. Last December, I was out running some errands, and I was approached by card narcs. That's uh, curbing, sir. That's right. Yeah, with card narcs, that's uh, just curbing. It's a violation here. We'd like for you to take the car back to the corral over that way if you could. Where are you going? Sir, we have a maneuver called a pit maneuver. Cart's right here, sir. I'm standing with the cart. It's your cart, sir. Why, why do you do that, bro? Why do you got it back in my cart? Well, it's your cart, not my cart. What he did was he put the shopping cart behind my truck, which prevented me from leaving. I felt that this guy was trying to entrap me. I was like, man, come on, dude. I don't have time for this. You understand the principle, though, right? That, like, carts can get out and hit people's cars, so that's why. You know, you know that's against the law to videotape somebody without their permission. Let's talk about the cart, not about the videotaping, you know, sir. No, it's against the law to video somebody sir, what about without the their permission. What about the cart? Not, you don't have, not you're, have you're, permission. You are, you're deflecting. You do not have my permission. You're deflecting from the cart. Ah! I believe this guy, Sebastian, was really trying to antagonize me. Yeah, with car narcs, that's uh, just curbing. It's a violation here. Two days later, I learned that he had posted a video of me on the internet. You know, I was upset. All this guy is doing is trying to provoke reaction from people and for likes. I want to confront Sebastian to let him know it's not good to antagonize people you don't even know. This guy has to be really careful with what he's doing because he's going to meet the wrong person, and this can get real ugly real quick. Tremaine, good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sue. And thanks for your willingness to be here today. Uh, you feel like you were victimized by him and shamed on the Internet. Uh, yes, I was. And what do you want to say to uh, Agent Sebastian? <laughs> uh, Sebastian, um, it's not good to go around and push people's buttons because you're going to provoke a reaction. You're going to get a reaction. And what you do is you push buttons for no reason. Well, I would take a, I would take objection with the no reason. Uh, again, why didn't you just take your cart back? Parking lot monitors specifically pick up shopping carts. That's oh, their job. This is the old. They get, they get paid to do just that. Look, this is a classic example and, and terrible reasoning we hear from these people all the time. Who's we? Uh, that I hear from these people all the mm -hmm. time, um, is they pay people to do this. Well, they pay a janitor in that same in that same shopping center to wipe up the toilet. Do you go in there and pee all over the, cause, you know, because eventually the janitor will come and clean up after you, or do you pick up after yourself and do what's asked of you? And what you, quite frankly, you know you're supposed to be doing. It's not like it's trash. I'm, you're not throwing something on the ground. I'm not talking about trash. I'm talking about blocking spots. Well, you said it was like littering. It's similar, yes. Well, no, it's not similar because littering is a crime. Not, this isn't a crime. You're equating one thing with another. One's a crime, one's not. That's an analogy, Dr. Phil. But it's a it's similar... It's a bad analogy because <laughs> one's a crime and one's not. It's, it's kind of like saying we when it's me. It's a similar principle of picking up after yourself. You know, yes, littering is a crime, and I do feel that leaving your shopping cart out should be uh, somewhere in there. Well, but, but it isn't. Not yet. That's why, that's why I do what I do. Why did you put the, bas the shopping cart behind my truck? 
That was, it's sort of an empathy move where we don't, we don't do that anymore talking to our lawyer. They think it's kind of a gray area because, <laughs> because it goes to show you that when you leave your cart out, it can block someone else and we see it every day. You pull into a spot and there's a cart sitting there. I got to get out, move the cart. It's, it's to show you what will happen to other people when you do what you did. But you know, that's called a form of detaining, right? It, it can sort of be. No, it's, it is. Well, look, that's why we don't do it anymore is it's a gray area. Um, but again, we've never been charged with anything by any law enforcement. We have plenty of evidence of what we do. Who's we? I've never been charged. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Uh, I've never been charged by any municipality in any one of the 50 states, and I travel all over the place because it's not really any kind of crime to, to ask people to be a better citizen and pick up after themselves. Some of his critics wonder if something happened in Sebastian's childhood to make him behave the way he does today. Uh, I invited the one person who can answer that question better than anyone. That's his mother. And she's going to be joining us next. So I'm very proud of Sebastian for coming up with this creative idea. And who the all the cart nuts. Okay, well, you can cart nut, go yourself. That's assault. You know what they say in show business. At least they're talking about it. Summer is the season where most kids look forward to no school, lots of free time, and warm days to go out and play. But for many children, summer means a lot less to eat. During the school year, more than 22 million children receive free or reduced price meals but that drops to less than 4 million in the summer. During the summer, the Feeding America network of food banks helps provide free meals to children who depend on them during the school year. Find out how you can help feed a child this summer by going to drphil.com because summer is no fun when you're hungry. People say, what's wrong with this guy growing up? I, I was forced to pick up my own toys, clean up after myself. Why is that an astounding concept these days? I had a normal childhood, graduated with a degree in biomedical engineering. I'm not some maniac from under a bridge. I just happen to appreciate when people are courteous to each other. While many blame Sebastian for riling people into fits of rage with his unique style of questioning, my next guest, his mother Karen, says that he is doing nothing wrong and anyone who flips out at him only has themselves to blame. I absolutely support my son, Sebastian. I've watched all of Sebastian's videos. And who the f are you? Okay, well, you can cart nut yourself. She hit him and she threw her drink on him repeatedly. That's assault. I'm a nice guy. I'm helping out the community, actually. From every video I've seen, Sebastian is totally respectful because if he wasn't, I, I might have to scold him. <laughs> I saw one video where a man in a truck pulled his gun on Sebastian. I understand why people get angry because after all, they've been caught doing something they know is wrong. I grew up in the 50s and 60s when the show Candid Camera was highly popular and that show would set up pranks that normally embarrassed people. So this sort of entertainment is nothing new. Sebastian does cause controversy with his videos, but I'm very proud of Sebastian for coming up with this creative idea and having the bravery to actually go out and do it. You know what they say in show business, at least they're talking about him. Well, Karen, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Now, aside from this shopping cart, mission in life you're really proud of your son right absolutely i mean he's uh, highly educated which means he's done very well in school he's clearly intelligent very articulate he has problems with his pronouns but other than that he's <laughs> he's very intelligent guy and he's done a lot of socially responsible things as well in, in fairness he's volunteered with big brothers and big sisters uh and you know, given of his time. You have to be proud of that, too, as well, right? Of course I am. In the alternative, of course, it wouldn't get as many clicks, but in the alternative, you could take a whole other ploy because shaming people, name-calling, those things actually demotivate people and cause them to have an ab reaction, a resistance to change, 
I hear what you're saying. No, that is true. But when you say name calling, it, we call people lazy bones. But if I just go out there and, and people say, why don't you take it back for them? Because then they'll just think that they can do whatever and they'll say, oh, there's some guy, whatever. They don't see the consequences. Okay, actually, I understand what you're saying. You just don't know what the hell you're talking about. Because the evidence contradicts what you're saying. The evidence says that you can inspire change, but you can't shame change. I've asked people, would you like to take it back? They tell me to f off, they flip me off. The, just the request so often. I walked up a guy, hey, that's not where the card goes. If you Would responded you like? then and said, let me do it for you. It's okay. Don't worry about then it. Then they'll do it, do it every time. Actually, you're now arguing with the data because that's not the case. Uh, who that's spent more time in parking case. lots, me or you? No offense. <laughs> oh, definitely you. You know, because I'm aware that there are other problems in society that might be slightly more pressing, like homelessness, oh, but depression, No, 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 anxiety, no, 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 no. Okay, uh, how many of you who are clapping for that went and fed people at a homeless soup kitchen this morning? Zero? I thought so. Yeah, no, because don't give me, that's another, yeah. that's another dodge we hear all the time, Dr. Phil, and I, and I, quite frankly, I know you're smarter than that. Yeah, I'm a lot smarter than you might think. We'll meet a woman who says Sebastian is playing a very dangerous game that could end in tragedy. She claims she can say this because of a mistake she made that she is still traumatized by almost 10 years later. She's going to join us next. The hospital staff is reeling from the shock death of one of the nurses. Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? The Australian DJs responsible for the prank call were still bragging about it this week. The prank call absolutely ruined my life. Sebastian, I'm not sure if you're trying to be famous or infamous. If you're going to prank someone, the joke should be on you. Closed captioning provided by on social media sometimes and I and I make jokes on social media you said I made a crack or whatever but if I do something I, I always make sure that if there's a joke I'm the butt of the joke let me give you an example this is something I put up that got millions of views it's just like eight seconds oh man a gift from TikTok what is this Oh, ho, ho. I know what this is. I'm gonna shred this puppy. That's not a hoverboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> this little eight second joke about it wasn't a hoverboard, and it, so it got five million views. I, I appreciate what you're saying, Dr. Phil, but. First off, I didn't know that was a rule, and that was very funny, by the way. But I don't—I didn't know that was a rule. <laughs> I didn't know it was a rule that you can't make a joke about anybody else. I didn't know that. I, I, that's news to me. Well, if it's humiliating someone, then you, the, you, yeah. know, you didn't enjoy that. My next yeah, guest you don't is be, a, you don't, people don't enjoy being called out. Absolutely. Sorry to interrupt. My next guest is a radio host who used to love engaging the public uh, and pulling the occasional prank on them. That was until one prank went wrong. And she says she's still reeling from it. Take a look. We turn to London, where it seems a joke phone call this week to the hospital where the Duchess of Cambridge was convalescing has now gone tragically wrong. The hospital staff is reeling from the shock death of one of the nurses. She had the bad fortune of picking up the phone and believing it was the queen. Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Oh, yes. Just hold on now. That's all Jacintha Saldana did. She answered the phone. The Australian DJ is responsible for the prank call. They were still bragging about it this week. Can you believe what has happened today? You know what? They were the worst accents ever. Until they learned of Jacintha's death. Now they've been silenced. The prank call absolutely ruined my life. I lost everything. I've had people threaten to quit because they don't want to work with a murderer. I've been told to kill myself over 15,000 times. The grief overtook everything. You're tarnished for life. It's nearly 10 years and I still face these issues. The mistake that was made that day is the person on the other end of that line we didn't think about how she was feeling and what she was going through. And if you're going to prank someone, the joke should be on you, not on someone else. Well, joining us now virtually from the Gold Coast, Australia, please welcome Mel. 
I don't think you guys ever intended to get past the receptionist that answers the phone at the switchboard. You never intended to get past that, right? This was just going to be a 10, 15 second bit and move on, correct? It was going to be how quickly can we be hung up on for our ridiculous accents. Sebastian, you don't know what these people are going through. What you're doing to these poor people is shaming them and humiliating them. And who cares about a cart that much that you're going to put someone's life on the risk with their mental health? It's ridiculous. Next, joining us is a man who says Sebastian isn't interested in social justice at all, but is hooked on humiliating people and translating that into cold, hard cash. We'll hear what he has to say when we come back. These are not videos about getting people to put their cart back. This is just a hook for Agent Sebastian to enrage people and then milk that rage for cash. We have a word for people who set out to upset others. And that word is bully. Sebastian travels the nation in a bulletproof vest, berating so-called lazy bones, for not doing what he says is a common courtesy. His videos have gotten a lot of people talking, including my next guest, an academic in Israel, who says common courtesy is the last thing Sebastian is interested in, and what he's doing is a smokescreen for antagonism and humiliation. I'm Dr. Nicholas John, a professor of social media at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. <laughs> I've been studying Karnak's videos, and they are not what they appear to be at first sight. These are not videos about getting people to put their cart back. This is just a hook for Agent Sebastian to enrage people and then milk that rage for cash. Get the f away from Why me! Why are you being right so angry? Now! The victims don't get upset because Agent Sebastian asks them to put their cart back. They get upset because he harasses them and abuses them. In one striking example, Agent Sebastian accuses a woman with a disabled placard of having lazy bones And I do have a handicap, actually. Uh, well, so just let me know. But I get what you're saying. The lazy bones itis? And when his victims try to leave, Agent Sebastian trolls them further by placing magnets on their car or calling them names or sometimes physically blocking their car. Sebastian is not interested in social justice. The mission he has taken on is to upset people. And we have a word for people who set out to upset others. And that word is bully. Well, joining us virtually from Israel is professor of social media at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Dr. Nicholas John. You think this is an exploitive cash play, essentially? Uh, yes, I do. These videos simply aren't about getting people to put their shopping carts back. Uh, social media rewards content producers who put online uh, videos of people freaking out, getting very angry. Um, Sebastian himself knows this, uh, and he rage milks. He purposefully angers them, and their anger is converted into social media clicks and views. Uh, now, Tremaine... Tremaine told my team that he would press charges against Sebastian if he knew he had a strong case against him, but does he? Now, I invited a leading social media lawyer to weigh in on this topic, and joining me now virtually from Miami, Florida, is president of the social media law firm Ethan Wall. Uh, Ethan, uh, where are the boundaries? Where are the lines here uh, on the social media front? The first thing that you mentioned, Tremaine, is something called harassment. And this actually may be a viable legal claim for you. Harassment occurs where someone's intention is to publicly embarrass or humiliate you. And here, Sebastian is taking these videos for what he claims is for removing carts, and maybe that's true. But there's also the intention to embarrass and humiliate you by putting you on camera. And Sebastian is making money off of your videos and your appearance. He's making money not only through YouTube ads because of all the people that are watching your video, but he's also selling merchandise, T-shirts, and those stickers that Dr. Phil showed. So one of the claims that you may have under California law is a civil or criminal claim for harassment. 
But the second one I also want to mention to you, there is a claim called... imprisonment that may have civil and criminal penalties. We stop rolling people's cars behind people's cars for just that reason, and our merch goes to animal rescue charities. I make no money off that. It doesn't matter where it goes. You're still receiving a legal benefit. You're receiving millions of views, hundreds of thousands of followers, and all that does have value to you, whether you go to charity or not. So at the end of the day, you can continue doing your channel, but just know that people out there like Tremaine are being legally harmed, and there could be penalties for doing so. Next, can the stress of being publicly shamed online make you seriously ill? We're going to move on from this topic, and we're going to talk about stress in general. My next guest wrote a book about it. We'll be talking about that next. Are you concerned about some young children in your life? Do you fear their caregivers are making unsafe choices or even worse? If you I want to hear from you right away. Either log on to drphil.com and click be on the show or text Phil to 88500. It's 88. And immense stress can really have an impact on the mind and body. Now, my final guest today says stress is one of the many life factors that, if left unchecked, can lead to hearing three words nobody ever wants to hear you have cancer. Now, he's just published an insightful book about simple changes that we can make to greatly lessen our chances of succumbing to the C word. Now, before we meet him, let's take a look at him in action. Joining us to talk more about this is Dr. John White. He's chief medical officer at WebMD. Cancer is truly a global disease. Take control of your cancer risk. My friend, Dr. John White. I wrote this book because I wanted to empower people with information. There are things that you can do to reduce your risk. Is there a crisis in parenting? Dr. Phil, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here, John. Well, Dr. John White is a good friend of mine. We've worked together on numerous occasions, and he is the author of Take Control, of your cancer risk and stress has a big impact on cancer and that's what you're writing about tell us about it and you're absolutely right dr phil there is a mind body connection we've known about it for thousands of years but we haven't done much about it what we've learned though over the last few years that in many ways cancer is a disease of inflammation and daily constant stress causes inflammation so we really have to take control of our stress if we want to take control of our cancer risk. You say daily stress can be cancerous, just straight up, that it encourages inflammation, that cancer is a disease of inflammation, and it makes you prone to more infections. And bottom line, you said that we need to learn to practice forgiveness and gratitude. Tell me why that's so important. The way that you reduce stress is you need to focus on you. Too often we focus on what other people do and how they impact our lives. And we can't control that. You can control what you can do. So it's about forgiveness. 
And you say sleep is also very important. Talk about yeah. that a little bit. You know, sleep is about quantity and quality. So we talk about typically seven to nine hours a night of sleep. But, you know, we all have these trackers that we're using. So it's also about getting quality sleep. Now, there are two things you talked about with regard to sleep, and that's the temperature at which we have the room we sleep in, mm -hmm. and the other is wearing socks in bed. So talk about those two things, because I think people yeah. are going to find this interesting. And they are connected. So you want to keep your room where you sleep dark, quiet, that makes sense, but you also want to keep it cool, typically around 68 to 70 degrees. That's the temperature you want. And if you're having fights over it, what I tell people is try wearing some socks to bed. And that may sound crazy, but there's actually studies have shown that when you wear socks, it actually causes the blood vessels in your feet to dilate, to get bigger. And what that does is that makes heat come out of your body and that lowers your core body temperature. So put that thermostat at 68 degrees, Dr. Phil, and put on some socks, and, and you might sleep better. I like that. And Dr. White, I'm so glad you wrote this book. Thank you for talking about it. Thank you for writing the book. And thank you, Dr. Phil. Um, so I, I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Dr. John White in Washington, D.C., whose new book, Take Control of Your Cancer Risk, is out now. It really is a remarkable read that will undoubtedly save lives. Dr. White has very kindly arranged for everyone in the studio audience to go home with a copy. And everyone in our virtual audience will receive an e-book. So our virtual audience is handled too. Um, I invite everyone to tell a friend about this book because knowledge is power and knowledge like this can be the difference between life and death. For more information about today's episode or if you'd like to share your story, log on to drphil.com. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to the new season of my podcast, Fill in the Blanks. I'm launching a new mental health series called Toxic Personalities in the Real World. The second episode of the series, I continue my conversation about narcissism. Also listen to Robin's podcast, I've Got a Secret. You can find out the secret to clean beauty and waterless skincare with Bite Beauty founder and serial entrepreneur Suzanne Langmuir. You can subscribe, download, and follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here.